Hello friends and welcome back. So today's topic for discussion is types of sensitive information. Be it personal information or business critical data, it is crucial for us to safeguard our information from potential threats. And to do so, we must first understand what constitutes sensitive information. If we know which data falls into sensitive category, we might gain insight into the potential risks associated with it, handling and storage and subsequently implement robust security measures, access control and encryption protocols to protect against unauthorized access, data breaches and cyber attacks. So grab a pen and paper and let's begin. There are different types of sensitive information and today we will cover personally identifiable information personal information, sensitive personal information, non-public personal information, material non-public information, private information, and protected health information. So these are some types of sensitive information and there can be some other modes across the globe, across different geographical reasons. Personally identifiable information, which we generally refer as PIA. So what is PIA? Personally identifiable information is defined as any information that can be used to identify an individual directly or indirectly. It includes data or any information that can uniquely identify a person or when combined with any other information, it can lead to the their identification, right? So these includes names, full name or just first or last name, biometric records like your fingerprints, iris scans, which are used for identification purposes date and place of birth, driving license number, social security number, all these are PIIs. And these are often targeted by cyber criminals because it can be used for identity theft or financial fraud or any other malicious act. Next is personal information, that is PI. Personal information is often used interchangeably with PII. So it may include personally identifiable information as as well but it is a broader category personal information that is pi includes personally identifiable information that is pii as part of its scope but it goes beyond just pii to include additional type of data that can be associated with an identified or identifiable individual so personal information pi is a broader category and personally identifiable information that is pii is a part of that broader category in other words, we can say that all PII is considered as PII, but not all PII is PII. Means if you can use any information to identify any person, that is also considered as PII. There are dif different personal information which does not identify any individual, right? Like your IP address. That is personal information, but that is not personally identifiable information. That is PI, not PII. Employee record information like your job title or your salary, right? That is your personal information, but not PII, until unless it is like used with any other information. Your location information, photographs, all these are examples of personal information, PI. And there are some other examples as well, which are PI, but not PIA, like your political opinions, your religious beliefs, your sexual orientation, right? These are your personal information, but until unless they are used with any other information, they does not identify you. So that's why all PIA is PIA, but not all PIA is PIA. Read this statement again and try to understand what I am trying to explain. As we move forward, I will give more insight on PIA, PIA. You will get more understanding and relationship between them. Next category is sensitive personal information. It is a special category within PI. So again, it is an, another category within PI, within personal information that warrants additional protection due to its sensitive nature. SPI is also PI. All SPI can be considered as PI, right? But all PI cannot be SPI, like we discussed earlier as well. So uh, what is SPI? It includes the most sensitive information like individual race, ethnic origin, political opinion, religious or philosophical beliefs, trade union membership, genetic data, biometric data, health data. So these are sensitive information. Some of them can identify an individual. Some of them cannot identify individuals. Now, 
you all might be wondering all these terms sound same what is actual difference what is relationship with each other so let's try to understand relationship between pi pii and spi definition of personal data or personal information might change if we move to different continents or different place right these terms may change as per geographical locations and different laws and different sectors in which organizations are operating for example for hospitals or medical institutions patient information is very sensitive and similarly for banking and financial institution account details credit card or debit card information or details and the transaction details are very sensitive right so for different sectors there can be different sensitive data but broadly how we classify them we discussed that in the earlier slide right now let's understand the relationship between pii and sensitive data so all pii and spi are considered as pi okay all personally identifiable information and sensitive personal information are considered as personal information and yes this statement is correct we discussed right if there is any information which identifies you that is your person if there is any sensitive information either identifies or does not identify you but that is your sensitive person information right like your political beliefs that is your person pia and spa both are subset of person right not all personal information are considered as personally identifiable information because there are some non pia information as well which are considered as pia let me repeat again not all personal information is considered as personally identifiable information but there are some non pia as well which are part of personal take an example like your job title or location may not be enough to uniquely identify you but this information is still considered a personal information right it is a non pia but it is a pi right it is a non personal identifiable information but it is your personal information right are you understanding what i am trying to explain spi can be pia or non pia meaning that some spi identify an individual while some some does not identify an individual it is a information that is private but potentially harm an individual if it is made public some websites claim that all spi are pia but i believe all spi are not pia let's understand how suppose if there is any information that is concerned any individual race or ethnic or political opinion that does not identify an individual hence it is a spi but not falling under pia on the other hand biometric records are spi and pia as well they are sensitive and they identify you as now i leave it up to you to decide whether all spi are pias or no then we have another category of information which is non public personal information under glba act so let's understand what is glba first the gram leach blyle act is a U united states federal law it applies to financial institution or any institution that is engaged in the business of providing financial products and it includes banks credit unions securities firms insurance companies and investment advisors non public personal information is a type of sensitive information defined by the gram leach blyle act that applies specifically to financial service institution non public personal information includes data such as name address phone number social security numbers bank account numbers credit card numbers etc and it is considered to be sensitive because it can be used to identify individuals track their financial transactions or commit fraud or identity theft right then we have material non public information which we call as mnpi and it refers to data or information related to any company its holdings or its subsidiaries that have not been publicly disseminated or made available to investors in general right and this information is highly sensitive and can impact a company's share price as well because the information is not yet public and if it is available to public then it can have a ne negative consequence right 
and it includes corporate information your earning reports financial records upcoming plans or corporate actions like if you are planning for any ipo or acquisitions or if you have any legal proceedings or ruling against you so these are private information that is not available to public right and it is strictly regulated to prevent illegal or insider trading it requires careful handling and protection then we have private information under new york shield first let's understand what is new york shield it applies to businesses that own or license computerized data and includes the private information of new york state residents right so own or license computerized data meaning that businesses that either have ownership of computerized data like digital data you can say or have obtained the right to use any data through any agreements in both the cases they have control over the data and are responsible for its protection even if a business is not located in new york and if it is still collecting or using private information of new york state residents then it will be subject to the new york shield act which we just discussed and this act defines private information as any information that can be used to identify an individual like their name address social security number so again different state different countries different continent different geographical locations might have different laws which are only applicable to their region right similarly if we go to california there are some other privacy laws which are exclusively for california residents if anyone is dealing with their data right and definition for private information might be little different right with respect to indian context we discuss that there is a critical data the new term so as per the new draft critical data is government data like your aadhar card or your passport number but if you go to another country then critical data may be different if you go to any other uh, banking or financial institution critical data may be different right so these terms might look similar but you have to understand the meaning of these terms what is sensitive what is identifiable moving ahead we have protected health information under hipa protected health information as the name clearly states it is related to your health hipa is again a act in us and it is a set of regulatory standards that intend to protect private and sensitive patient data from hospitals insurance companies or anyone dealing with patient data healthcare providers any healthcare provider right phi includes medical information that can identify an individual and is created used or disclosed during the provision of healthcare service right which can be your health record your health history any services rendered lab test test results prescription appointments medical bills or anything related to your medical so that's all for today understanding these types of sensitive information was crucial for us to implement appropriate security measures right if you know what is sensitive and what is critical then only you would be able to put appropriate controls for if any information is highly confidential you will put in more controls if and if any information is pu- public then you won't put any control right so that's why it is very important for us to know which data is critical which data is sensitive which data is more important to us in order to secure that right thank you for patiently listening to me we will be back soon with another video another module another dose of learning thank you have a great day bye bye